Alec Baldwin, A Very Angry Narcissist, Part 2. Heavy.com reports it as follows. In 2007, Alec Baldwin was having custody issues with ex-wife Kim Basinger over their then 11-year-old daughter, Island. The fact that there are custody issues is common in a dynamic that takes place between a narcissist and a non-narcissist, or where there are two narcissists who collide. Invariably, the difficult and toxic divorces are that because there is a narcissist involved. There are divorces that proceed in a collaborative and constructive way, but they're very rare. And if you want to understand why this is, listen to my video, Why is Divorce, Divorce So Hard? as I go into greater detail about that topic. But the fact that there are ongoing custody issues is an indicator of problematic behaviour where there may be a necessity to need and assert control. The report explains that after Ireland missed a scheduled phone call, Baldwin lost his temper, ignited fury, and left her a voicemail message that ended up being made public. In the voicemail, Baldwin said, You have insulted me for the last time. You don't have the brains or the decency as a human being. I don't give a damn that you're 12 years old or 11 years old, or that you're a child, or that your mother is a thoughtless pain in the ass who doesn't care about what you do. As far as I'm concerned, you've made me feel like shit. I'm going to straighten your ass out when I see you. I'm going to really make sure you get it. I'll let you know how I really feel about what a thoughtless little pig you are. You are a rude little pig, okay? Quite the howitzer to open with. Let's go through that statement again because it's chock full of indicators. You have insulted me for the last time. Grandiosity, threat. You don't have the brains or the decency as a human being. Insult. I don't give a damn that you're 12 years old or 11 years old, doesn't even know her actual age, which shows a lack of accountability for his relationship with her and an absence of emotional empathy. Or that your mother is a thoughtless pain in the ass, insult, smearing, triangulation, who doesn't care about what you do. As far as I'm concerned, you've made me feel like shit. Pity play. I'm going to straighten your ass out when I see you. Threat. I'm going to really make sure you get it. Provocation. Threat. I'll let you know how I really feel about what a thoughtless little pig you are. Insult. Provocation. You are a rude little pig. Okay. Well, Mr Baldwin, no beating around the bush there with your thoughts. Clearly, anybody that leaves a message of, those, of that nature is exhibiting an absence of emotional empathy for their own child. Two points arise. He's talking to a child and he's talking to his own child. His reaction is that he has been wounded as a failure for there to be a telephone call to him. As a consequence of that, his fury ignites, causing him to seek to assert control directly by hoovering his daughter through a telephone call. In that, he utilises a number of instinctive manipulations for the purposes of asserting control over her. There is no veneer, there's no facade at work here. Heavy.com continues to report, During an interview on Good Morning America, Baldwin admitted that the voicemail left him suicidal and created a strain on his relationship with his daughter. You don't say. Note the point about feeling suicidal. That's likely to be a revision of history and pity play. According to People, Baldwin said, It's a scab that never heals because it's being picked at all the time by other people. Blame shifting. My daughter, that's hurt her in a permanent way. Baldwin said that his suicidal thoughts were very serious, and he said, I spoke to a lot of professionals who helped me. If I committed suicide, Kim Basinger's side would have considered that a victory. Destroying me was their avowed goal. Notice how he brings it all back to about being being about him. No genuine remorse for how he treated his daughter. No genuine concern or compassion for how it's impacted on her, but rather, I felt suicidal, and if I'd have committed suicide, well, my ex-wife would have considered that a victory. Paranoia, destroying me was their avowed goal. Grandiosity, making it all about him. Baldwin, the article continues, decided to appear on The View to open up about this, explaining that Whoopi Goldberg, Goldberg is a friend. I called her and said, do you think I can get a fair shake? 
Because when you talk about family law and parental alienation, there is this unfortunate gender-based dynamic. Could I walk into a show with a strong female audience? Would they understand my point of view? I trusted Whoopi and Barbara Walters. Whoopi is an impeccably decent person and I'm grateful she gave me a forum. So, of course, in order to assert control indirectly, rather than deal with these matters privately as somebody that would operate with high emotional empathy, it was necessary for him, driven by his narcissism, to basically go and bleat about his problems on a television programme. And therefore he contacted Whoopi Goldberg in order to do that. Note that Whoopi is spoken of in favourable terms because she gave him something that he wanted. She was painted white, and therefore that's flattery, another form of manipulation. TMZ was the first outlet to make the infamous voicemail public, and when Baldwin spoke about TMZ head Harvey Levin, he called him a human tumour, insult, a graceless character who lives in that weird netherworld, smearing and insult. Baldwin went on to say that, when that voicemail tape thing happened, Matt Lawyer interviewed Harvey Levin before he even called me. Lauer put Levin on today, and they never phoned me. When it's in their interest to reach me, they know how. I saw that and said, my relationship with the Today Show is over. I'll never do Today again, ever. Life's too short. Assertion of control by withdrawal. Baldwin also opened up about the voicemail incident in his memoir. Nevertheless, the Hollywood Reporter stated that in the memoir, Baldwin admitted to regretting the voicemail, false contrition, but still having hard feelings towards his ex-wife, Basinger, from that time. This incident in 2007 and the behaviours that followed thereafter are instructive, as I've detailed to you, in seeing a variety of indicators of narcissism at work. We move forward to the Washington Times in 2008, where Sonny Bunch wrote, Alec Baldwin has popped up in my inbox twice this month. First, in this New Yorker profile, followed shortly by a copy of his new book, A Promise to Ourselves, A Journey Through Fatherhood and Divorce. Both times I've been struck by how into himself he is. Self-absorption. Consider this passage in which Billy Baldwin describes his brother's plan for a movie starring all the Baldwin siblings. Basically, it was Daniel's the outlaw. I'm the riverboat gambler who is good with women. The shallow, good-looking sap. Stephen's the village idiot. And Alex, the freaking hero. He's the one who saves the day at the end. He's the Clint Eastwood. If you're looking for how my brother thinks about his brothers and how he always felt about his brothers, that's it. That's the movie he wanted to make with his brothers. That information from one of his brothers exhibits grandiosity, an absence of emotional empathy and magical thinking. The Washington Times article continues. There's another little vignette that sheds some light on Baldwin's personality. For much of the piece, he complains about how he never gets to see his daughter pity play, how she's being kept from him, and how much it hurts. Smearing, because he's blaming other individuals for causing him a problem. And then, in the telling of the New Yorker's Ian Parker, he's approached by Marcy Klein, a senior producer of Saturday Night Live. <clears throat> Klein had been pressing him to host again. He has hosted his show 13 times. At 14, Baldwin would draw level with Steve Martin, the record holder. Nobody does the show better than Alec, Klein said to me. Nobody. Baldwin said there was no time. They argued back and forth. Seriously, Klein said. Baldwin responded, It's my daughter's spring break. It's my only vacation with my daughter. It's my daughter's spring break. She'll have fun. Baldwin's resolve was slipping. He said to his assistant, Do me a favour. Give me the phone. I'm going to call Ireland. I'm going to see what she says. The not-so-little Ireland. Five feet ten. Five feet ten. Of course, what's exhibited here is that he is trying to assert control by triangulation, saying to the relevant producers of the programme, I can't do it because it's my daughter's spring break. That might look like empathy on his part, but it isn't. He's merely using the excuse of his daughter's spring break as a reason to assert control over those people trying to make him do a show. Then eventually, his narcissism causes him to decide that he will do it. And so, whilst he complains about the fact that he never sees his daughter, he's quite content to decide that he's going to drop the vacation, drop the, her spring break, in order to go and work. Absence of emotional empathy, self-absorption. And indeed, the relevant article from Washington Times continues, I'm sorry, Alec, you can't have it both ways. 
you don't get to whine and moan about not seeing your daughter, then blow her off when Saturday Night Live comes knocking. We move forward now to a further incident in 2011 involving Alex's attendance on an aeroplane. Join me in part three as we continue to examine whether Alec Baldwin is a very angry narcissist. <laughs> 